Today's event is put on by the Ministry of National Security showcasing the, very, the various agencies of the ministry. So the JDF is here, as is the JCF, the DCS, the Firearms Licensing Authority, and various other agencies of the ministry. Uh, for our part, we are going to be putting on a mini tattoo, if you wish, a small sample of what to expect at the Jamaica Military Tattoo 2012, which is going to be June 28th to July 1st at the JDF Polo Field in Up Park Camp. Uh, today you're going to see a demonstration of a joint air and sea uh, operation. It's going to depict what typically happens on one of our interdiction operations at sea, as well as a search and rescue mission, how we would usually carry out a search and rescue mission. But without a doubt, the main feature of today's event will be, the, the main highlight of today's event will be the appearance by the CF-18 Hornets, courtesy of the Canadian Forces. Uh, that jet is going to do a 40 minute performance today and it's the first time we've seen anything like this in Jamaica. So if you can't hear it, then you definitely should be down here to see it, but it's something that's not to be missed. Uh, this is a demonstration of the Jamaica Defence Force Coast Guard showcasing not just the various uniforms that the Coast Guard uses but also talking about some of the capabilities. One of the things with our Coast Guard is that most of our operations take place miles and miles away at sea where people can't typically see what the Coast Guard does. So a display like this will help to give Jamaica a better appreciation of the hard work that our dedicated men uh, and women uh, perform, the men and women of the JDF Coast Guard. Yes. Right. Uh, you'll also notice that right beside the Coast Guard display is an infantry display, again showcasing some of the equipment that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, what's important to note too is that even our Coast Guard soldiers, they begin their training with the basic infantry skills. So any Coast Guard personnel can double as an infantryman uh, whenever, wherever, because we all have that very basic skill set. Uh, so what you're going to see here, you'll see the Kevlar helmet, obviously, for protecting our heads. Uh, we have binoculars, radios, and some of the standard issue equipment that we will take out on operation on a daily basis. All right, basically what we have here, um, items from 2JR and from 1JR, which are the main infantry units of the Jamaica Defense Force. Um, if you look closely here, You'll see a DVD indicating the significance of the puppy. Um, the puppy basically will be celebrating that in August of this year. Um, it is to basically help to finance the persons who went to war for Jamaica. Um, these persons are currently at Curfew Home and through the puppy appeal is the main means by which we actually support them. So today we're really looking at the puppy but the main focus will be on the tattoo, which will be the biggest event for Jamaica's 50th anniversary. Come, mommy, come. Okay, right here we have a display that is showcasing the work of the JDF Earwing, as well as one of the little known aspects of the JDF, which is the medical company. Uh, with respect to the earring, the JDF earring is responsible for flying a number of medical evacuation and casualty evacuation missions each year. They are also our primary means of supporting our troops, whether it be by aerial surveillance or troop transport to areas of operation. Uh, medical company, what what a lot of people don't realize about the JDF is that it truly draws on every single aspect of social life when we talk about professions. So the JDF makes use of lawyers, doctors, engineers, you name it. And right here we have a sample of some of the equipment that you'd most likely come across at the JDF Medical Company, whether it has to do with dentistry, pharmaceuticals, uh, triage, type of medical care that soldiers would need in the field. All of this is housed right here at the medical company because again the JDF must be able to look after its own. It's a very self-sufficient organization so any problems that our soldiers have we should be able to take care of um, right here. One of the things that most people associate with the JDF is obviously this uniform. 
but we have a number of different uniforms that we would use depending of course on the situation. Uh, here, for example, is our ceremonial dress. You're most likely to see our soldiers wearing this uniform when they're on parade, such as opening of parliament, the changing of the guard at King's House, that sort of thing. Uh, this green one here is similar in function to the red one, but this is worn by our reserve element, 3JR. This is, this is our service dress. This is also worn for certain formal occasions that we be involved in. Um, and this is typical of what our officers would wear. Yes, and, and as I said before, there are vast numbers of different uniforms that we wear depending on the situation and of course depending on the unit. Okay. What you have here is the JDF's engineer regiment putting some miniature display items of what we typically do while out there in the field. The JDF engineer regiment is primarily responsible for keeping our soldiers alive and protected while they're out in the field. So when we talk about things such as uh, ablution facilities, housing, protection, crossing of ditches, rivers, etc. The JDF engineer regiment would be called upon to provide those uh, resources. Here we have the Gibeon basket. The Gibeon basket is used for river training, right? You know, for, to prevent soil erosion within the river bed. Okay. You know, we, we pack them up um, alongside the, the river, mm -hmm. river, 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 river bed. And you know, the, when, when, once the water is flowing, it will flow through the basket and not cut away or, or, or remove all the, the soil along the river banks. You know, and this is just a part of river training that, that we that we use. Um, this here, this is a improvised raft for troops. Uh, what we, what we have here, these cans represent 50 gallon drums, empty drums, metal That's drums. The big. Yes, that one right there. Okay. So, yes. So we use boards, planks, and rope to configure this um, improvised raft, and soldiers will be seated along. This section. What, what, what's in the drum that keeps it afloat? It's empty. It's empty drum. Okay. So it's, we just use depending on air oh. to stay afloat. Right? And the soldiers will be sitting along this side and they'll be paddling down the river mm -hmm. or in the sea. Right? Um, in addition, we could put a ply board covering the surface mm -hmm. and we could drive our vehicles onto the improvised raft. Mm. Moving down the river just the same. So this improvised raft transport both personnel and vehicles, our vehicles and personnel. What we have here is a gin. So gin, as you see, it, it, it looks like a, an improvised elevator, but it's not. What it actually it, does. It wants to look similar to like the zip line. Yes, to the, to the zip line. What, what it does, it, it gap, it, it span, it spans a gap and one person on the end will be pulling across persons or load across the gap for the footage. And this is just one of the uh, structures that we do in the, in the engineering regiment. We do a lot of um, construction, uh, both uh, temporary and permanent structures. Um, this is here is a, a swinging bridge that we built. Uh, this here is a, a non-equipment bridge. Um, here is um, what, what you mean non equipment. Non equipment meaning uh, it's, it, it is for for foot for foot for foot. So not, oh, not for okay, not like for pedestrian. Heavy, yes. Okay. Not 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 heavy not, not heavy equipment. Not, okay. Not, not heavy equipment. Across on this, on we have anything here. similar to these things implemented in Jamaica? We have this. We have this here similar to this one. We have the, the, the Yalas Bridge, however the Yalas Bridge is is for, for, for heavy traffic. Mm -hmm. We have similar construction with the time and bringing across. Um, um, did the JDF um, build? Yes, we, we, we assisted in, in the construction of the Yalas Bridge. Okay, well. great, great. Yeah. Right here, I, I know handle to Mr. Coombs, that's for Coombs. You know, explain to you the improvised um, refrigerator and store. Mm -hmm. Okay, good day. First day. As you know, day to day we see Day to day we will see this on the street side 
or anywhere on the road. I say, oh, it's jump, rubbish man. Yeah? But we took it up as a project in the JD. We the engineers went to school this as a project. We transfer normal 45 gallon jump into a refrigerator. We did all the insulation and all the mechanics. And we made a refrigerator. Where did the idea came from to build this? The idea mm -hmm. came from well, me and a couple of guys from the refrigeration shop inside an engineer regiment at the JD. Mm -hmm. Went to school for three years to study refrigeration. Okay. You know the properties, the description, you know everything about refrigeration. Then we brought up this jump to see how economic it could work. We could get things in place. Alright, so in comparison to the normal fridge that you have inside, like the home, right? Um, which which one would use more electricity? Or well, does it use the same amount of electricity as the one you have in the world? It does, but this is more economical. In what sense? In what sense? Mm -hmm. It works better with insulation due to the, the fact that it's steel. Mm -hmm. When steel is insulated, you should have better management where cooling is going to take place inside. Mm -hmm. Because heat exchange is better. Okay. Okay. Now, went to school, I said before, and we learned about the properties, the description, and also the principles of refrigeration. Now, with all of that idea, came across to me. And the drum was the first one. Okay. Um, do they only use this in JDF? This, as mm -hmm. I said before, was a project. Oh, okay, okay. So you, you ever thought of um, trying to market it in Jamaica? No, but the idea came across. But money, as you know. If marketing was supposed to take place, probably JDF would be on top. Mm -hmm. Because we have used a lot of things before, including a normal air conditioning unit to make it to a cold room. Okay. And it's working now, currently. So this and this are the current projects. So this one over here now, what, what exactly? This is this also is a, a refrigerator? It's a tribal stove. Oh, okay. Cool. Where you can use both gas, coal and electricity. Oh, okay. <laughs> We have a lot of innovation here, man. Right, but this is taking the market presently. Mm -hmm. Anywhere we go, over to the schools, colleges, this is one taking the market. Okay. So you can look in and see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what I realized, I don't see any like ice build up or anything inside. Yes, it's there. Look closely. Okay. okay. Can you see the cross? Mm-hmm. Cross marks? Okay. Oh, right, 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 right. And point to note. Point to note, it takes up to 10 minutes to freeze up. To come to a complete freeze. Mm -hmm. You can actually have something cool once you put it in your app. Okay. So right, it's that's very cool. Good. Mm -hmm. So, with reference to maintenance and cleaning now? Maintenance and servicing, mm -hmm. that's what you're talking about. Right, exactly. Okay. Maintenance and servicing is very good because right here is where you have the condensing unit and the compressor. Oh, okay, okay. So, it's a simple pull of a screw. It's a regular fridge. It's a regular right. fridge, right, 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 right. So it's innovation of the engineers. Mm -hmm. you want to see a